Okay, so welcome to another Bitwig device tutorial. And at this point, we're going to talk about the multi-node. It's a pretty simple device, but if you don't know it, I'm going to show it. Uh, I'm going to go and bring this right here. So this is the new version, the one, the, the 4.1 version. The previous versions had only pitch and velocity, but now we get a spread and chance control. These ones are pretty simple to understand. Don't worry. So I'm going to go and throw it. This is the default values and I'm going to go and turn all this all the way off. And I'm going to go and turn this off and show you what I got right here. So this is the sound I get. All right. Pretty simple thing you're doing. All right. So again, the, what this one will do, the multi-node, it will recognize whatever it is that you, uh, you're you uh, putting right here, the incoming MIDI note, and then it will go and kind of uh, add notes on the, on the top or below, or it will give you the uh, fundamental note and it will transpose that note. So for example, the first one, which is the note number one, and if you hover at the bottom, you're going to see something that says note one, note two, note three, so you get eight. So the first one, if I turn this off, and then I do some playing, notice that nothing happens. And it's because the first one is going to be, again, your incoming note, your fundamental note, let's say. So if I do this and, you know, leave everything as default, we get the same sound. So the trick right here is that this one, what you can do, you can go up in pitch. Let's say I'm going to go uh, maybe three semitones. And now the sound is going to be a little bit different. It's just going to shift that pitch. And if I record this, just to just to make sure that this is doing the right thing, I'm going to go and notice that it's just three up, which is, again, cool. You're able to transpose that key. So then what, what's the point of all of this? We're going to talk about the velocity and, the, and everything else in a minute. So I'm going to go and turn all the, to, this to default, right? I'm going to, again, talk about this in a second. So I'm going to go and do double click and just take everything to default. Cool. So, okay, so what I want to do uh, right now, let's say this uh, progression of notes, it's not that cool, right? So I want to add something else and I don't want to go and edit the MIDI. So let's say I want to add uh, an octave up so you can easily go right here and add an octave. Let's say I want to add an octave down. I'm going to go and say minus 12. And this is what will, this one what will do uh, will just give me that. The fundamental one up and one down. So this is what is coming out of, of this uh, of this track, right? So this is what we get, it's pretty simple. So let's say I want to add this one and then I'm gonna go and do a fifth. So let me do minus seven, oh, actually plus seven. And I'm gonna go and record this and now you are getting a chord with a lower and a higher octave. Again, just very simple to understand. And it's a very cool way just to add uh, something more or just to, you know, just to try different ideas and, you know, avoid editing the MIDI because you can go and do it right here, right? What's the point? So, okay. So, of course, this is pretty simple. Now, what you can do, and notice that this one, uh, whenever, whenever I do this, it sounds a little bit harsh. And it's because the velocity of all uh, the notes are at the same spot. So, I'm going to go and just turn this off. And I'm going to show you what the velocity does. So this one can do go plus 48 or minus 48. If I do double click, is nothing. So it means that the incoming node, this one, has a velocity by default. So this is the default velocity, right? So it means that if I go up or I do zero, it's not going to change the velocity. But if I go up, this one will do, it will just kind of a boost that velocity. So it's going to sound louder. And if I check this, Notice that the velocity is all the way up. Yeah. Okay. And if I go down, it's going to just do the opposite. Of course, it's going to be much quieter. Uh, I'm going to go and I just, you know, there you go. So we, we get, we get that. So this is what it does. And you, you know, maybe you're thinking, okay, so that's cool, but maybe why use it? Well, maybe the minus 12 or the plus, um, the, this one's maybe not the fundamental or just too harsh. So what you're going to do, you're just going to go down in velocity just a little bit. And maybe I want more of this one. I'm going to go and do plus. And again, I'm just, you know, messing around with this. I'm going to do play. And notice that some of the keys are just, you know, lower velocity, higher, and then lower. Cool, right? So very, again, very simple to understand. Very simple stuff. So, okay. So this is what the velocity does. Pretty simple. So I'm going to go and set it to default.
Then we have this spread. And on this one, I'm going to go to the same example. Just going to show you what this does. I'm going to go and go 100%. And you can hear and see what is going on. Can you notice that there's kind of a, it's kind of a moving all the way? all around and it's because the spread it means that it will do a randomization of the velocity that's what it does right very simple so this is a new addition for this uh, 4.1 uh, version of bidwick and is that this spread it's kind of a linked to the velocity so it means that this one will kind of a let's say modulate uh the uh the velocity it's just giving us a random value now of course if you go all the way uh, well, all the way up it means that you're going crazy but if you go all the way down, maybe just 5 or 10%, uh, it's going to do something more normal. So let's say, oh, let me just start from the beginning. So I'm going to go and say play. I notice that we can have even notice the change. But the change is there. If I go there and check, the velocity is different. And again, this is just a nice way to add a little bit of human uh, movement, let's say. All right, so this is what the spread is going to do. Uh, okay, of course, I'm going to go and double click it. And then we're going to talk about the chance. So the chance is, uh, again, just pretty simple. So the chance, it mean, if you have 100%, it means that each note that you're uh, playing right here, that is all these notes, every time we it's receiving a new MIDI note, is going to do the same thing with whatever we are doing the same, uh, we are doing right here at the bottom. So if I go and lower the chance, maybe say 50%, so it means that there's a 50% chance that this note is going to translate to the polysynth. And if I go and record this, some notes are playing and some other notes are not playing. And it's because it's a, again, it's just chance. So that, that's what it does, it's kind of a gate. It's just saying, okay, this one is gonna pass, this one yes, this one no, 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 then yes. And all of this is just random. Now, of course, the chance is kind of a super low, it's 50%. So maybe it's not that useful, but maybe if you go to higher values, you're just gonna get maybe, uh, you're gonna skip a couple notes, which, you know, sometimes could be useful. Just to, you know, to get ideas. Or just to get something else. What you can use, you can use this just like we were using before, just to add a little bit more tonal, tones, to your fundamental. But you can also go crazy. Let's say I want to go crazy. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to bring the ADSR and let's bring the beat LFO. So what I want to go, I want to do, I want to keep my fundamentals and I want to keep them maybe not so high. Um, I'm going to go down on the velocity of this one and I'm going to go down on the velocity of this one. And I'm going to go and do the same thing right here, just a little bit less velocity. And I'm going to go and randomize the thing. I'm going to go and say this one is going to go crazy up and this one is going to go crazy. So when I go and do play, we get that. All right. Of course, you can modulate whatever you want. If you want to do the velocity right here, you can totally do it. Let me just do this once because, you know, why not? I'm going to go play it. All right. So of course, if we record this, the clip is going to... Gonna look all over the place that's fine okay so if i go and just double check this so this is this is what we get right so pretty simple now notice and this is some uh i want to say it's a problem it's something that you get when you do uh, when you randomize uh pitch values let's say that let's just pretend for now that we are making a track right and we, the track is on c major the scale c major so right now you're playing a C, right? Okay. So whenever you move all the way on this one, you're changing the pitch. So some of the notes are going to fall uh, not on the C major scale. They're going to go to different keys because it's kind of a random. So if I check this, notice that we have an F sharp right here. We have a maybe a G sharp, right? So we have some keys that don't belong to the C major scale, which sometimes, again, it's not that good. So I'm going to go and do this bipolar. It's going to go way crazier. Um, so what happens if you don't want this behavior? You want to want to play notes that don't belong to the scale that you're using, which sometimes is just sounds nice because it's a random value. It's just kind of a, an effects that we are building. But sometimes you just don't want this. 
So what you can do, you can bring a key filter, uh, which was, this one was called the diatonic transposer. And with the new version, they just changed the name. That's the only thing they did. It's just the same uh, device. It just changed the name. This one, what it will do, it will just say, okay, so we are playing on C. We are playing on the C major. This is the scale that we want. So we're going to filter or not uh, let any of the notes that don't belong to this, key, to this uh, scale. And it's going to filter them. It's going to remove them. So if we go and we do the same trick, now it sounds a little bit more kind of a, in the pocket, let's say. So it means that, of course, we don't have anything else. We only have the white keys because they belong to the, uh, the C major scale, right? It's just a nice way to, con to control all the crazy thing that is happening right here. You can also do constraint. And if constraint means that if uh, the note it was not within the C major scale, it's just going to move it uh, close to whatever key or note uh, that exists on the C major scale, that belongs to the C major scale. It's just going to move them. So we're going to get the same sound, but it's going to adjust some of the keys. You know, the keys that don't belong. So we're going to get more keys now. It's not removing. It's not filtering. So we get still, you know, still the same crazy sound, but now it's just a little bit more control. Notice that we ha don't have any of the of the uh, of the other <laughs> of the other keys. Cool. So okay. So that's it. This is what it does. It's pretty simple, but you know, it's very handy. It's a very handy device. All right. So hopefully you like this. Remember to like, subscribe, and to check Patreon. I upload uh, all the videos on this channel to Patreon way before uh, they are on, on YouTube. So remember to check Patreon, right? So, okay, so see you on the next one.